We've approached the point in our service where we are going to participate in the Lord's table. Uh, if you would, turn your Bibles to Zechariah chapter 6. Zechariah chapter 6. There's some men uh, coming down the aisles with Bibles. If you don't have one, uh, just raise your hand. They'd love to put a Bible in your hand. To get to Zechariah, it might be quicker to go to Matthew and flip a couple books back. It's the second to last book in your Old Testament. And if you get one of those Bibles that the men are passing out, it's page 672. 672. When Jesus was betrayed on that very night, he instituted what we're about to practice so that his disciples would regularly practice remembering him and proclaiming his death until he comes again. And what we'll see in Zechariah chapter 6, Zechariah chapter 6 verse 11, is a prophecy about Jesus that's yet future from now. And it is the accomplishment of an impossible task. Zechariah chapter 6, starting with verse 11. I'll read just verses 11 through verse 13 in Zechariah 6. The prophet is told, take silver and gold, make an ornate crown and set it on the head of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, the high priest. Then say to him, thus says Yahweh of hosts, behold, a man whose name is Branch, for he will branch out from where he is, and he will build the temple of Yahweh. Yes, it is he who will build the temple of Yahweh, and he who will bear the honor and sit and rule on his throne. Thus, he will be a priest on his throne, and the council of peace will be between the two offices. What we see here in Zechariah is a prophecy about an impossible task that Jesus will accomplish in the future. And this is helpful to look at for communion because it helps us remember who we are remembering when we take communion. There's much to here that we won't have time to unpack in the few moments that we have. I encourage you to read Zechariah 6, or even if you have time this week to read the whole book. But for our time this morning, what we need to see is this impossible task that Jesus will accomplish in the future. We need to see the truth about the future so that we rightly participate in remembering Christ now. Zechariah here is instructed to take up an offering, and with that offering, he takes the silver and gold that he receives, and he is called to make an ornate crown, according to verse 11. And he takes this majestic-looking crown made of silver and gold, and then De Zechariah does something unheard of. You see in verse 11 that he sets it on the head of Joshua, the son of Jehozadak, Jehozadak who is the high priest. If you were observing this, you probably would have gasped because a crown never went on the head of the high priest. And in, in Israel's entire history, the two offices of priest and king were always intentionally kept distinct from one another. The king was never to fulfill the role of the nation's priest. And yet here, this high priest at this time after this second temple has been rebuilt is wearing a crown that is fit for a king among kings placed here by God's prophet. And he didn't put it on a king or king to be, but this man would only play the role of priest. This was unheard of in Israel's history. And we see in verse 12 that not even this man, Joshua, this high priest, is fit to unite these two offices finally. But Joshua, having this crown on his head as the priest of the nation, is told to look forward to another man. He's told to behold 
a man whose name is Branch, who will branch out from where he is, he's told to look at someone entirely different, a future man. You see, this prophecy that's coming is not actually about this high priest standing in front of Zechariah. He's just a picture in this moment of someone greater, someone who is coming later and branching out from where he is. Verse 13 says that this one named Branch will build the temple of Yahweh and will bear the honor and sit and rule on his throne. Thus, he will be a priest on his throne and the council of peace will be between the two offices. This is unheard of, absolutely impossible for any mere man to accomplish by God's decree. God intended it this way. That one man will occupy both roles of Israel's high priest as well as Israel's king was unheard of. And this one, notice according to verse 13, this priest would rule on his throne. He would be a priest on his throne in the temple that he rebuilds in Jerusalem. The one being prophesied about is Jesus Christ. And Jesus will one day branch out from where he currently is at the right hand of the Father. He will rebuild God's temple in Jerusalem. He will receive matchless honor from the nations. And he will reign comfortably seated as Israel's king, serving as a priest in God's temple. This day is coming. This day in which Jesus reigns as a priest king on earth, this day is coming because there was another day that already came. The day that already came when Jesus suffered as the Savior, Jesus, the rightful king of Israel, offered himself as the perfect sacrifice for sins. He alone bore the weight of God's wrath against the sins of all who would trust in him. And in anticipation of that coming day, we remember today what Jesus has already accomplished on behalf of those who believe. The same one who will rule the nations, who is worthy of that honor, was the same one who humbled himself to suffer and die for you, Christian, so that you would not experience any of God's wrath and one day enter into that kingdom where he rules. Jesus will one day fulfill the offices of priest and king on earth. Do you treat him as such now? The bread and the juice should be taken by those who approach Jesus as their priest, the only one qualified before God to offer the acceptable sacrifice of himself on their behalf. And this time is for those who submit to Jesus now as their king. The one who has complete authority to rule over them and require whatever he demands of their lives. That's who communion is for. If Jesus is not your priest, if Jesus is not your king, you don't treat him as such, then we ask you please not to take communion, not as an attempt to shame you, but Jesus has given this to his people who receive him as both priest and king. And we would encourage you then, don't take communion, but do talk to me or someone you've seen up front. Today, we'd love to talk to you about how Jesus can function as your priest and king. Any of us would love to talk to you about that. But for now, Christian, as you anticipate this coming reign of Christ, confess that you failed to recently submit to him as you ought to. Confess areas of your life where you may recognize divided allegiances and joyfully remember what Christ has accomplished on your behalf when he died on the cross and rose again. Remember, rejoice, and partake in the Lord's table if Jesus is your priest and king. Men, please come serve us. You can take communion on your own when you're ready, and I'll be back to pray for us.